behind me we have a California buckeye, Aesculus californica. This is a really interesting tree. It's, uh, it's a winter deciduous tree, so it is bare during the winter. Um, however, as beautiful as it looks now, in full bloom with these beautiful white flowers and these deep green palmate leaves, uh, it's really a beautiful tree even when it's leafless. Uh, the trunk is a light gray color against dark black browns. It just it almost looks like it's a stark white um, Has a beautiful structure, but nevertheless This is it's uh, it's in its full glory right now. We're in mid-spring uh, in the gardens um, at the top of the north coast uh, section of the gardens um, just across from the rose garden and um, you can see these long uh, conical clusters of flowers. They can get up to uh, almost a foot long with just dozens and dozens of flowers. Um, bees, both native and honeybees, will come to the flowers. Interestingly though, the uh, nectar and pollen of uh, the buckeye is actually poisonous to some extent to uh, the European honeybee. It does um, affect their brood. Uh, they can be born with deformities. Um, so I, I think it's more of a, a, a nectar of last re resort for some of the honeybees. Um, but one of the things that makes the buckeye interesting is its apt adaptation to drought. It, uh, uh, it will start leafing out as early as late winter in some years, um, and then uh, it, once it fully leafs out, all the energy is directed toward producing uh, these flowers. Um, which are then, once pollinated, turn into very large uh, seeds. Um, but in years with little rainfall, uh, as a, a, a drought avoidance um, uh, mechanism, it can lose its leaves as early as uh, uh, late spring or early summer. Now, these here in the garden do receive some irrigation, so they hold their leaves for quite a while. But typically, even with irrigation, as we get into those fall months, uh, uh, they, they will lose their leaves, um, and you'll see those large seeds just hanging from the branches like, uh, like large fruit. 